Welcome to another episode of Two Chairs, One Technology, our Roland Schwartz video blog on interesting aspects around LT and LT Advanced. With me today is Torsten Hertel, our OTA product specialist. Welcome, Torsten. Thanks, Andreas. Torsten, I heard that you recently did a webcast on OTA um, for LT MIMO, and um, I'm sorry I missed that. So, and for everybody else um, watching, can you explain or give me a short, quick summary what is behind OTA uh, for LT MIMO? I can try. I know we have limited time, but um, let's maybe just start right at the beginning where you look at um, LTE MIMO performance of a device under test. What is affecting good versus bad MIMO performance? And in a, in a device, LTE MIMO enabled device, you really have um, two uh, key parameters. The MIMO antenna pair subsystem as well as the MIMO receiver subsystem. Each one of these contributes to, to good or bad MIMO performance. So it, it's important uh, for us that we develop an approach that uh, will allow you to look at both of these uh, subsystems individually and then combine them later on. Okay, so you say <coughs> that the, the antenna contributes to MIMO performance as well as the receiver or baseband implementation. Absolutely, both of those. And fr from an antenna perspective uh, in particular, uh, in order to achieve best MIMO performance, you want to design the antenna so that they're as uncorrelated as possible. Mm -hmm. So from a um, MIMO transmission diagram, uh, you have the device under test uh, with again the, the, the two key um, components, the antennas uh, with its inherent uh, correlation, and the MIMO receiver, they are exposed obviously to, to all of the MIMO transmission. You have the base station antennas, uh, quantity two for two by two MIMO. Uh, they're radiating uh, two separate MIMO streams. And then in the, in the in a actual channel, you see fading and base station uh, uh, correlation. See that's so that you see a very large amount of uncorrelated and faded channels hitting the device under test, um, as well as noise. So from, from our perspective, in order to determine the good versus bad MIMO performance, uh, we developed a decomposition approach. What's behind a decomposition? <coughs> so a decomposition approach basically means that you're trying to solve a complex problem by breaking the problem up into sub-problems uh, that are much easier to solve and then combine them later on. Mm -hmm. And again, the complex problem is to determine the MIMO performance of your device under test. So in the decomposition approach, we look at the conducted approach, uh, which is shown right here, uh, where we test the MIMO receiver, and then the radiated approach, where we test the MIMO performance of the device, uh, of the antennas integrated in the device. So for the MIMO um, receiver test, the conducted test, uh, we are basically eliminating, eliminating the antennas. Mm -hmm. But we introduce fading using a dynamic fading uh, simulator. In the radiated approach, we're not applying any fading inside the chamber simply because the antenna performance is independent on the channel conditions. So from that perspective, fading in the conducted approach and no fading profiles in the radiated approach at all. So basically conducted, uh, we're using the fading to uh, determine the receiver algorithms, how they can handle it. Absolutely. And then we have uh, in the radiated approach, we don't use uh, fading at all because that doesn't impact the antenna performance. Absolutely. We're not applying any fading profiles. Uh, absolutely. And with this approach, we determine a figure of matter of the receiver. And then independently from that, with the radiated approach, we determine a figure of matter for the antenna performance. And then we can combine both of those figure of merits to determine the overall figure of merit for the device. Mm -hmm. So that would, uh, uh, the results would be interesting to the antenna in, in design engineer as well as to the receiver algorithm modem design engineers because they know, okay, I have to work on the modem or I have to work on the antenna. Absolutely. Uh, also test labs or, or carriers, they, they would like to know if I, if I don't have a um, good MIMO device, what is it uh, that, is, that is causing it? Mm -hmm. And then give that corresponding feedback to, to the OD OEM. Okay. So let's focus on the, on the radiated approach. As I said, we are not introducing any fading profiles inside the chamber, but we're using two independent MIMO streams. 
And the way we're doing this from an implementation perspective, we're introducing a second downlink antenna in the OTA system. A second meaning because every SISO system already has the first downlink antenna. And with this uh, implementation, we can generate two MIMO streams with the CMW500 and connect each MIMO stream to a downlink antenna so that the antenna or the device under test is exposed to two independent MIMO streams. How I have to imagine this? Have, do we have an extra example where you can show me how these antennas and the device is moving? Uh, yes, absolutely. So first of all, maybe let's get into the uh, test details. So the, the test where you introduce two MIMO streams um, is what we call the peak performance OLS, OLSM test, peak performance open loop special multiplexing, which is basically the, the transmission mode we have two independent MIMO streams. Um, we can use any of the modulation um, schemes um, imaginable, 64QAM, 16QAM, as well as uh, QPSK. And then the, the actual figure of merit that we're looking at in this test is throughput, receiver sensitivities, as well as uh, some statistical metrics because they correlate better to user performance or, or network performance. <coughs> so. In order to uh, perform the test, we're, we're looking at uh, a variety of different constellations in, in 3D. So our approach is really looking at the 3D um, performance of the handset and simulating a variety of uh, angles of arrivals. The problem by not looking at uh, a, a 3D approach or a uh, 3D constellation is simply you, you, you risk of not looking at areas of the antenna pattern where you have weak um, performance. Mm -hmm. So you asked about um, the, the movements of the antennas or the, the constellations, and I prepared uh, two videos for two different constellations that we're using um, currently. The first video shown right here is uh, what I call the symmetrical constellation approach. So here you have the device under test moving in phi, and you have the two test antennas move symmetrical in theta at, at equal theta angles for each antenna. And you can clearly see that uh, in this video right here. The other approach is um, using a fixed offset between the two antennas. So instead of mo having both antennas move independently from each other, the fixed offset approach is set up so that the second antenna is moved at a constant offset from the first one. And that is what we're seeing right here. And that, that that's exactly what we're seeing here. Again, the device under test is moving in phi, but as you see right here, the test antennas are moving from top to bottom with a fixed offset, in this case, uh, 30 degrees from each other. So from an, from an advantage perspective, again, the, the key advantage is that this approach allows you to look at the receiver performance and the, the antenna performance independently. You get two figure of merits and you combine those in order to get your um, overall device uh, figure of merit. And then um, for people that already have a SISO system, want to upgrade it to, to LTE MIMO, <coughs> the upgrade cost is, is very small because all you do is you're adding a second uh, test antenna. From a complexity perspective, you're adding a, a second and test antenna. Um, mechanical movement is, is very straightforward. We have done this uh, for, for a number of years with our partner, uh, the Howling Company here in the United States. And uh, from a calibration perspective, you basically calibrate each antenna individually. Uh, and then, of course, one of the key advantages is uh, that we have a um, sufficient and manageable control of angles of arrivals in 3D. So it's a truly three-dimensional uh, LTE MIMO OTA approach. So this slide talks about the measurement example uh, for the radiated approach, where we basically took a um, CTI reference antenna or a set of CTI reference antennas. These antennas are um, external antennas designed on this PCB, 
connectorized with conducted uh, cables uh, that plug into the conducted ports of the device under test. And uh, afterwards, you close the lid with the device inside, and you have the device under test connected to the external set of uh, reference antennas. You talked about set. How many are there? So for this particular example, which is the, the band 13, uh, we have three different antennas. The go good, um, the nominal, and the bad. Each one of it has uh, known good, nominal, and bad minor more performance with uh, known antenna efficiency, gain in balance, as well as um, envelope correlation coefficient, which is a measure of how good or bad the antennas are correlated. Mm -hmm. So our approach um, ideally should be able to differentiate good from bad uh, antenna performance. And what we see here is <coughs> a CDF plot. CDF is a cumulative distribution function as a function of uh, sensitivity or downing power level. And I'm showing here three different curves bad, nominal, and good for the respective uh, CTI reference antennas. And you can clearly see that there is a widespread between these curves. And with the good antenna towards the left side of the graph, the nominal pretty much in the middle, and the bad uh, antenna mostly towards the right. And that is basically telling you that the good antenna is performing best and the bad antenna performing the worst. So what you would probably expect? Absolutely. I mean, th this is uh, what I would expect, and this is what our approach should be able to uncover. Absolutely. So you talked about our approach. So I guess there are more approaches. Um, if, I, if we look at OTA, what about standardization? Um, from a standardization perspective, it's, it's getting complicated. Obviously, there are, there are different uh, standard organizations out there, for instance, CTA here in, uh, in North America as well as uh, 3GPP RAN4, they're all looking at uh, a variety of different uh, LTE MIMO uh, approaches and methodologies. Their high-level goal is uh, to basically um, determine a test methodology and not to down-select certain approaches. So again, their approach <coughs> is to define a test methodology that different uh, system integrators or different um, uh, companies can adopt and determine their own algorithms or their own approaches to it. Okay. And from a uh, overall perspective, both CTIA and uh, 3GPP RAN4 are looking at a variety of different approaches. And they can be classified in basically um, two different techniques. There's the direct uh, measurement technique, where you do um, one measurement of the entire antenna and, and receiver, uh, so the, the device performance. Um, and in, in that camp, for instance, there's the anechoic chamber multiprobe method, as well as the uh, reverb chamber uh, method. And then there's the, uh, the indirect technique approach, uh, and our decomposition approach falls uh, right into this uh, technique, as well as the uh, two-stage approach. So again, two, uh, from a high level, totally different approaches but uh, CTIA and 3GPP RAN4 are really looking at defining the test methodologies that all four basically can, uh, can follow. Okay. Thank you very much, Thorsten, for the uh, quick introduction. Um, for those of you who, who missed uh, the um, OTA webcast that Thorsten recently gave, um, this was brought to you by Roden Schwartz as part of the Two Chairs, One Technology video blog on in interesting aspects around LT and LT Advance. Thanks for watching and don't miss the next episode.